Okay guys, hi and welcome to chapter 3 and uh, let's crack straight on with it. We're going to look now at the relationship on the arrange page between the three main component areas. That's the working area in the middle, the inspector column on the left here and the library tab of the media browser column on the right. Okay, now remembering from the previous chapters the I key on your keyboard opens and closes the inspector column and holding down ALT while tapping the L key closes and opens the media browser column on the right with the library tab selected. Okay, okay now to follow along you want to have two tracks uh, at least um, installed. One an instrument track, but it doesn't matter which audio instrument plugin is assigned to that. And one audio track, okay, and with either one selected and with these two columns open on the right and left, make sure that in the inspector column here on the left this top slot on the channel strip is left clicked so it's haloed or highlighted in white. Okay, now with it set like that, as I jump between the two tracks in the track list column, you'll clearly see the channel strip here on the left change and the library folders in the library tab of the media column over here change as well. Okay, change, change. So there's a relationship between these track headers in the track list column here the channel strips on the left here in the inspector column and the library folders on the right. So we're going to look at that relationship and we're going to look also at the signal flow. Okay. Now the best way to get your head around it is to think back to the old days of recording before MIDI and before computers and everything when it was just tape recorders. And um, basically back then to record and mix a finished song you must have two primary components. You must have a multi-track tape recorder, that's a tape recorder machine with multiple record tracks, and you must have a mixer. And if you've got those two things, you can record and mix a finished song. Okay, as long as you've got a microphone to record what um, the musicians are doing. Okay. All the things like effects, reverbs, etc delays, compressors, that's all icing on the cake. As long as you've got the multi-track tape machine and a mixer you can record and mix a finished song. And uh, if you think of it like that, that's the best way to get your head around it. Okay, now thinking in that way, this track list column here, where the track headers live, in other words, the record tracks, this column is your tape recorder. This is your multi-track tape machine. Okay, and on it live the record tracks okay and this tape recorder machine can have as many record tracks as you like also it's a special type of uh, recorder machine because the tracks on it can record or either audio or MIDI data because remember all instrument tracks are recording MIDI data okay okay now like in an old school studio <clears throat> each recorder track has to be wired to a mixer channel strip so if we open the mixer below, we can see that as I change between selecting either of the record tracks on the recorder, the channel strip in the mixer is highlighted to show me which channel strip is wired to which record track. So this channel strip is the channel strip for this record track, and this channel strip is the channel strip for this record track. OK, now if I select this record track, this is its channel strip in the mixer, and as I move the fader up and down, you can quite clearly see that the channel strip on the left here in the inspector column is a visual copy. OK, whatever I do to this channel strip, it, 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 it mirrors it over there on the left. OK, this is a copy of this. If I then highlight this record track in the recorder, this is its channel strip in the mixer, and if I move the fader up and down, you can clearly see this on the left in the inspector column is a visual copy of this channel strip. Okay, So in other words the channel strip on the left in the inspector column is always a, a visual copy of the highlighted channel strip in the mixer. Okay, So we know that the 
channel strip on the left in the spec column is always going to be the channel strip for the selected recorder track. Okay, so that then leaves this channel strip on the right here in the inspector column. What's that? This one, yeah? Well, that, as you see when I clicked on it, the final output stereo out, output 1, 2 channel strip on the mixer was highlighted. And if I move the fader up and down, you can see that this channel strip here on the right in the inspector column is a visual copy of this final stereo out 1, 2. Okay, so I'll close the mixer again. So I select this track here. This is its channel strip on the left. So if we go down the channel strip, we arrive at the input output section here. Okay, which you can see the label I forward slash O, which means input output. Now below below that lives the input slot and the output slot. Okay, now we're looking now at the destination that this channel strip is going to send its signal out to and that is defined by the setting in the output slot okay and if you left click and hold down on that left on that um, output slot you can see the choice of destinations okay this channel strip for this record track can be can send its signal out to the destination of no output at all, meaning any signal flowing down this channel strip will not arrive at the final output 1, 2 stereo output mix. Or you can assign the output to surround, but we won't touch on that now. Or you can assign to binaural, which we won't touch on now. Or you can assign the output to a bus, all right, which we'll come to in a bit. Okay. Now by default, all tracks you create here in the track list column whether an instrument track or an audio track their channel strips will always be default to send their output to the destination stereo out the final output one two which is going to your speakers so you can hear and you can mix okay that's the output destination there you see and as by default each type of track when created its channel strip always defaults to send to the destination of stereo out then as I select either track okay its channel strip here appears on the left and this on the right is the destination channel strip that this channel strip on the left is sending its signal to so the right hand column always shows the destination channel strip for the channel strip on the left and the left channel strip of course is the channel strip for the selected recorder track okay okay let's move on <laughs>